You're good to go. Go ahead. Okay. Well, uh, first of all, it's great to see all of you in one place. Uh, you guys are clearly having a good time at my expense, and that's perfectly fine. That's what a chairman is supposed to do for a committee. But in any case, um, we're, uh, this is our first organizational meeting. Wanted to get this out of the way before we got into town, as it were. I uh, hope you all had a great uh, interim and uh, holiday. I know we've all been working very busily. And uh, let me just go through the, the agenda that Trish has laid out for us. Trish, feel free to cut in at any time. This is all new to us. And if I'm making a mistake, I'd prefer for Trish to correct me in real time than to wait until the end. And of course, as always, uh, Chief of Staff is going to be Trish Gagnon. Uh, front desk reception is going to be Rose Love. Uh, go ahead, Rose. Wave to everybody. Hi there. there. Okay. Hi. Uh, we are going to have a new committee clerk, assistant Zoom he uh, hearing host, Uriel Vega. Uriel, if you could uh, wave to us. Uh, uh, he's a student from Say Hi, so we can see you or whatever. Okay. Or not. Oh, he's not there. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Mary Phillip, of course, is going to be uh, uh, in, in the back. Uh, preparing all of our work for floor reports. Mary, great to see you somewhere there and have you. Have you. And of course, our council are, are going to continue to be the fantastic uh, Kristen Flynn, Pat Tracy, and Matt Meichler. So it's great to have all of you. And so let me just get straight into it. Uh, we're going to be doing everything live on Zoom. And uh, hopefully my problems, my laptop have been corrected. And I want to thank Karen Cassidy from OIS for having talked me through all of this. Um, you know, so basically, um, we're going to be doing this, of course, at Zoom, uh, through Zoom. And every day, uh, uh, public hearings are going to be broken into various periods. But for every day, there's going to be one Zoom link for our committee. So uh, let me just go through the time blocks and explain that. On Mondays, we'll have uh, 1.30 to 5.30 set aside for public hearings if we have to use Mondays. Tuesday through Thursday, we'll have three blocks, 11 to 12.30, 1.30 to 5.30, and 6.30 to 8.30. And that's when we'll have the public hearings, and we will have one Zoom link for that entire day. And uh, uh, Trish, I believe what we're going to be doing is we're going to be asking people to leave their zinc, uh, Zoom link on, correct? Or how, how's that going to work? Yes, um, the, it's one Zoom link. So you basically have to walk away and mute. I was told you have to mute your microphones and turn your um, your yeah. cameras off and go do what you have to do. Um, although the question has come up, why can't they just leave the meeting and come back in? But that's a lot of work for us as hosts to keep letting people in and out of the meetings. So we prefer that they stay in the meeting and go get their lunch or um, coffee or whatever and just step away. And there'll be a sign for the public that says the committee is on break. Uh, we'll return at 1.30 or whatever the time is, 6.30. Okay. Um, so it'll just run continuously. It'll be live that whole time, even if we're not on it. That's correct. Okay. Right, right. And uh, uh, so that's, uh, let me go to the next item and that's attendance. Your camera has to be on. And so if you get up to, I, I you know, I believe what, what that means is if you have to get up to get a cup of coffee or uh, take a bathroom break or whatever, you still have to leave the camera on. And um, that, I mean, that's the way it's going to be. Now, in the case of myself and the vice chair, Dana, uh, we're at all times, either he or I will be uh, conducting the business of the committee. And so, of course, there are going to be moments where, you know, we have to get a cup of coffee or we have to do something. And Dana and I will coordinate to make sure we're not doing those things at the same time. So um, uh, that's uh, that's as far as uh, attendance is concerned. Let me go to witness sign up because this is a little different from prior years as well. Uh, we're going to have 48 hours uh, uh, sign up uh, between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m., 48 hours before a hearing date. Uh, the second thing is bill order, 24 hours before we have our public hearings, I will announce 
the bill order so that we can put it, publish it publicly and put it into the system. Um, and then there will be no more than 50 witnesses. Now in our committee, we don't have, have many bills that have more than 50 witnesses. We're not like judiciary, but we do occasionally. And this is my commitment to everybody on the committee. I, I, I'm gonna respect that 50, uh, public, uh, 50 witness uh, you know, um, uh, limit that the speaker's office has put down uh, put down upon the six committees. I, I agree with it. So, you know, but here's the thing. I don't want to have anybody feel that they're being excluded from the debate. And so if, for example, there's an issue that divides Democrats and Republicans, I will be working closely with Delegate Jacobs to make sure that the Republican point of view is adequately covered. If you have 100 people try to sign up, I still want to maintain a balance so that you as a committee will be able to hear both sides. There may be other issues that aren't necessarily Democrat versus Republican, but they might be, you know, watermen versus aquaculturists, for example. And again, I'm going to go to members of the uh, committee who I think will be able to uh, guide me as to which of the, which uh, of the witnesses ought to testify. The bottom line for me is I don't want anybody to feel that they're disenfranchised or not included. And I'm going to reach out to everybody in the committee to make sure that a proper group of witnesses are called up in those instances where more than 50 have requested to sign up. Um, Okay, bill hearings. Uh, we have uh, 85 pre-filed bills, uh, 65 of which have been scheduled. We're waiting on local bill bills for delegation letters and joint bills will be scheduled pretty soon as well. Um, as I said, um, we uh, our, dele our delegation, our uh, committee is going to be um, on Zoom and so will our subcommittees. Uh, they'll be hosted by the subcommittee chairs and their legislative assistants using uh, a Zoom link that will be provided to them by information services. Uh, leadership meetings, which is of course me, the vice chair, the subcommittee chairs and uh, Delegate Jacobs, uh, those are also going to be uh, uh, handled using Zoom. Uh, we're, not by the, we're not going to use, for example, uh, we're not gonna use the conference room because that's just too, it's too close quarters and we don't want to run the risk of infecting people. If we have non-virtual meetings, they will be in very large open spaces. And so for example, if there's a group that I, uh, and this is all gonna go through with my approval, if we are to meet with live human beings, it would be in the hearing room, for example, where people can spread out if it's absolutely necessary. And so, but my, my incl inclination is to limit that as much as we, as much as we possibly can. Um, let me go to the next things I'd like to do is I'd like to go through questions and answers with all of you. And then I'd like to simulate a uh, voting session, a voting roll call and a voting session where I say, all those in favor signify by saying I, who's against. And so uh, I just wanna run through that at the, uh, near to the end so that we can see how that works. Uh, so why don't I go to questions and answers and Trish and I will try to answer these things as best we can. Um, anybody There's a from lot of questions speakers? in the chat. Oh, okay. Uh, is, there, um, is there anybody, anybody here can from I the just ask? Talk? There's a reporter from Maryland Matters who just emailed who wants to watch this. Is it on the website? Yes, Kathy, it's on the Maryland okay. Assembly hearing schedule. Yeah. All right, I'll tell her. Uh, is anybody from the speaker's office here before I take questions? Hey, it's uh, Patrick from the speaker's office here. Oh, Patrick. okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, basically, uh, Trish and I are going to try and answer questions. If we make a mistake, Patrick, feel free to jump in. So um, I'm going to go to the chat right now. And I think, um, well, I see a Delegate Harrison's hand up. So why don't we take uh, Andrea first? And I've been kicked out of the meeting for some reason. Uh oh, thank you. My, my question is, um, when we have to, <clears throat> excuse me, testify in um, different committees, how does that work? <clears throat> Do we know yet? You know how sometimes we have to go to mm -hmm. the other committee rooms to testify on a, on a bill that we have, perhaps? Um, 
If somebody, I, I don't know the answer to that. And uh, also I, I've lost my screen for some reason. We well, can we can still you. hear and see you, Kumar. I don't know. Okay. Well, I can't hear and see anybody else, but okay. Oh, gosh. Um, Delegate Harrison, we... Um, oh, here, there you are. Okay. You just treat it just like, you're, just like our hearings when you all have to run off to other hearings. Um, you know, you're going to have to maybe go into your office to zoom into ways and means or appropriations. Um, you know, in that case, you probably will have to take your computer with you if you. If, You're going to have to have would, two would computers, be, it, aren't you? It would be nice yeah. to have personal computers for people to do things at the same time. But if you can't do that, you're going to have to treat it just like just like before you would leave and then come back. OK, so basically, we're just going to have to have another setup because I don't yeah. think you can do two zooms on the when you're saying computer. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, in that case, you would you would have to leave the meeting. Um, and then you would be entered and then you'd come back in and you'd be in the waiting room and we'd let you in. OK. All right. OK. Thank you. OK. Um, all right. I, who, who, I'll tell you what, who, who who has a question? Because I can't really see from these chats. Um, Delegate somebody's... Layman was asking about large groups. Okay. Um, like Vaughn Stewart had a group yeah. of 50 school children. Um, you know, my my only answer is that we just no, that was a joke. That that actually was a joke. Oh. I was teasing, right. I was teasing Vaughn. You Kilmer loves to do that. That's right. I like to encourage uh, that kind of behavior, probably <laughs> to my detriment. Um, Vaughn, do, do you have a question? I do, do. Have I, have a serious, I have a serious question. You had promised um, at the end of last year to fast track bills that, that mm -hmm. passed our committee and passed the full house if we brought them back as they passed. And right. so I'm wondering um, with that in mind, do you want us to treat, because um, I, have, I have one bill like that do you want us to treat that as one of those, you know, where the sponsor says, this is that bill from last year that passed, you know, unanimously, and this is the gist of it, and you don't want us to have a bunch of witnesses, or what do you, how are you going to treat those? Yeah, I mean, obviously, let's uh, say you, for example, have a bill that passed our committee and passed the House floor, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I would like to limit testimony if that's possible, but if people insist upon testifying against it, I don't see how I would be able to stop people. I, I just want to encourage the sponsor. I want, I want the sponsors to know that my commitment is to pass your bill. And so there's no reason for you to have 10 people testify in favor of a bill uh, that has passed the House floor, ha passed committee and passed the House floor. And, and obviously, if opponents want to testify, I have to respect that. But I'd really like to limit the amount of time so that I could get to the business of getting the bill out of the committee and onto the floor. Vaughn, did you have a question? No, I was simply responding to Mary's uh, gentle ribbing of me. Well, at least it was gentle. Uh, any other questions? Um, I have a question, Kumar. Oh, uh, sure. Uh, hey, Jerry. How are you all? Um, on, um, do we have any idea of how many days a week we will actually be in session? And if so, on days that we don't have session, do we need to be on the campus or in the general area to do these Zooms or can they be from home or from Miami Beach or wherever, <laughs> wherever we, we may get to, uh, to do this, uh, Kind yeah. Of yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, you could do these from your home if you wanted to. And on those days where we have inclement weather, that would be a, a pretty positive thing. I personally am going to be in Annapolis. I've rented a place. Maureen mm -hmm. and I will be down down here. And, I, you know, I just don't feel that I can be chair and not be present in Annapolis. But that doesn't that rule doesn't hold for you. OK. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, questions, further questions. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so I think I just got me thinking, especially if we're going to need to use potentially multiple computers. Um, have we heard any updates on the bandwidth in the, um, especially in the house office building? Because I'm just imagining, 
if you have folks that are logged into two computers potentially at one time, just because it's an easier experience, um, I'm just concerned that we might come into some challenges with accessibility. That might be a question for O'Leary, I'm not sure, but just wanted to know if there are any updates on that. I don't have an answer for you. I, I presume that they've thought about this and are making, uh, taking the uh, necessary steps to provide adequate bandwidth. That right, Patrick? Hey, Delia, can you repeat the last part of that again? Well, yeah, the question I have is um, potentially, you know, it, many of us will probably at some point have to be using two devices. And so, you know, that's making me think that um, it might cause additional bandwidth capacity issues that we maybe won't be prepared for. So I was wondering if there was any update about um, improving the bandwidth in the house office building. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's been something that's at the top of the uh, speaker's mind in um, organizing this. It has been something that's been in consideration. I believe the signals have all been boosted in the campus. Okay. Well, uh, well, when you're talking about signals, are you, uh, I know that uh, there's been an effort to improve AT&T and Sprint service for uh, smartphones, but I, I think she was referring primarily to the bandwidth issues, I think, with respect to the computers. And, you know, I would tend to think, for example, if you're sitting in your office and you have your computer plugged into the ether Ethernet cable, that that would... Um, I, I mean, I think that would be a very secure, a very strong connection. Also, because we're not going to have large, large numbers of people on the campus, um, you know, with their iPhones and uh, laptops uh, logging on to the um, Wi-Fi network, I, I assume that that would mean that the, the system would have less work to do, I guess. I don't know. That's a good point about not having as many people um, on campus. Okay. Yeah, but in reference to the signals, um, you know, I, I mean, I, I think it applies both to the uh, wireless internet as well as um, cellular. So I know that's been a big consideration, something that OIS has done and um, has been a it's been a big part of this, uh, putting this together this session. So I, I think it should be all right. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, that you, Barry? Yeah. Um... Jerry had asked uh, how many days a week were we going to be in session? I didn't hear an answer to that. Do we know yet? Um, that's a good point. You did ask that and I didn't answer it. Patrick, uh, what's, what's, what's the official answer to that? So as of right now, there isn't a necessarily set schedule, um, you know, as things are kind of evolving and changing this session, um, such as the, uh, you know, bill hearings kind of starting on day one, which is, uh, not the norm. Um, the times of recession will be uh, told to everybody within due time so people can be prepared for that. But there is not a set schedule per se at this moment. There, asked and not answered. <laughs> uh, uh, questions. Moving on. Moving on, right. Any other questions? I, I have one quick question. It's, it's been in the Go chat and it. maybe it's um, been answered. But I, um, so the, the, the like the stay, uh, Jen Tarasa brought up, I had my hand um, up to ask it early, but staying logged into Zoom. Um, uh, so because we'll probably be taking meetings in between, I guess, would it be okay then to log out? And then um, if we have to take a meeting or if we don't have another device or that device is being taken up for something else, I just want to make sure we're not inundating staff, but also uh, trying to be kind of practical in that like, yeah, my Zoom will be on, but suppose I'm taking meetings in between that has to be on Zoom. And I, yeah, and I think someone said it correctly. I don't know if you can be on Zoom, the one Zoom in two places. And so. I, I, I've i never attempted it personally. I don't know the answer to that. Trish, if you can get an answer from OIS or Patrick, if you have an answer for that. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, I was just told that the, the, the Zoom link stays active. Um, and as chairman, you can tell people, well, if they have to go, they have to go. The problem is when they come back into the waiting room and if we're in the middle of letting witnesses in, we may not see their name. So it, it's gonna be a, everybody be patient. And yes, we will let you back in, but we might be in the middle of letting in a panel of three witnesses. And 
it's just hard for us to keep track of who's coming and going, but we'll do our best. So you can absolutely log out and go to your meetings and log back in. But if you're if you're five minutes late and I already have 28 witnesses in the meeting, it. it might be hard for me to see your name, but I will, we will certainly yeah. do. Is, is there a way to, is there a way to, to you know, and, and we all should be Zoom experts by now, but I'm still not. Is there a way to have it so that just those in the committee could get in without being put in and others would have to still wait for the host to put them in? I don't think so, but I will okay. look, I'll look into that. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead, uh, Sheila. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Actually, I have two questions. I apologize. One, uh, I might have missed this, but in the uh, in the 50 um, uh, people's witnesses, um, will bill sponsors be able to designate their panelists to make sure those get in? Yeah, I'll work with the sponsors. Uh, I don't uh, I don't want to create a situation where a sponsor has four people that they need to have testify and I d disallow that. I I'm going to work with everybody. It's my it's my commitment to all of you to make sure that this process is as fair to all points of view as possible. Thank you. Thank you. My, my second question is, did we um, designate a procedure for questions and hearings? Do we use the raise hand or do we use chat or are you taking them either way? Well, I haven't really thought about that. Uh, Trish, do you have a suggestion? Well, is there um, I'm, there's a host and a co-host and actually the chairman can also be a co-host. So you could see the questions as they pop up. But um, the other option is for, a, you know, it's, that's how you kind of used to do it. The other option is for us to say, okay, Delegate Anderton has a question, then Delegate Ruth, and then, you know, you can have your, your host do that. Um, you have to kind of think about that. Um, uh, we And, you know, we're just the first hearing, we'll just kind of figure it out and then we'll say, oh, this works best, this doesn't, you know. So we're gonna have to just kind of jiggle around with how to take questions because the raise hand function with 48 people in a meeting is, it gets missed. And I know some of you have had your hands raised and you said, oh, I have my hand raised. Well, um, it's, it's hard when you have a lot of people in a meeting to see those hands because I only see the speaker. I don't see everybody. So um, like you all probably have gallery view on right now but um, the, the host can only have speaker view on because that's what's going live. That is what the public sees. The public only sees the person speaking. So, so it's hard for me to see now. Yes, in the, I have a participant list of everybody that's in the waiting room and that would have their hand up. But again, it's so long. I have to, I have to um, scroll down four pages of participants to see it. So we may have to figure out a way to put it in chat yeah, I, I was thinking that maybe if you write the word question in chat, then I'll, you know, jot down on a piece of paper the order in which people have asked to ask right. a and question. The only other little problem with chat is, um, as of right now, we are supposed to enable chat only for people to ask the host a question. So... So basically, if someone has a question, only you or me or Uriel, whoever the hosts are, would see the question because that way everybody's not chatting with each other. So um, that's yeah, I mean, experience. and it's just not going and, on and, the just, and just write the word question. You don't have to actually type the actual question into the chat. Yeah, that would probably be what we'll try to start with for sure. And then hopefully I'll have to make the chairman a, a co-host of some kind um, so he can see that. Yeah, okay. Um, Andrea, do you have another question? Yeah, just on that same note, would it be helpful, um, say like when, um, if we have to pop out for, uh, for another meeting or something, would it be helpful to do a private um, message to, um, to, the, to the host or co-host? being either um, Kumar or Trish. Yeah, yeah, I think that would yeah. work good, Kumar, don't you think? Yeah. I think so, yeah. I think that's a good solution. Um, you know, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I, I try to look at my text messages in real time. So, um, yeah. Um, not the text, no. not a text no. message, but the, the private chat here on Zoom. Well, look, 
Well, first of all, be aware that everything that's in the chat room and Zoom is available to the public and uh, freedom of information, just to reiterate that. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess the private chat would work. Sure. Okay, I guess between the two of them, we can figure out to let you know if we have to pop out of the meeting for whatever reason. Sure. Um, and, you know, one thing I want to emphasize is that this is new to us. And so for the first week, we're going to be feeling our way. And, and uh, you know, I, I want all of you to feel comfortable to express to me anything that you think I'm doing incorrectly, because I prefer to hear it from you so that I can change it. Or if there's something I'm doing that you don't like, but I have a really good reason for it, I want to have an opportunity uh, to clear the air and explain what that reason is, uh, if that if that, that so happens. So as, as usual, feel free to uh, contact me at any time um, uh, on any issue. Uh, any other questions? I'm trying to go between the two pages. Yeah, so, okay, Mr. Dana. Yeah. yeah, a couple quick questions. First, uh, are witnesses still going to be subject to the uh, two minute limit? Yeah, in fact, what's, uh, I, I we actually uh, are making it possible for me as chairman to say, let's say there's a bill that has 20 people uh, uh, signed up. And uh, let's just say for the sake of argument that you're the sponsor, I can, uh, I, I can make an arrangement with you, for example, for your bill, where I say, all right, you and your witnesses are going to take up 10 minutes, and then the opposition panel uh, will take up 10 minutes, and then we'll go to questions and answers. So I don't want to be, I, I don't think the two minute limit is going to be as strict a thing as it was in the past, especially in instances where we have a lot of people testifying. Um, the speaker has encouraged all six of us chairs to go, through, go to the mechanism of saying X amount of time for us support and X amount of time for opposition. And if there's a bunch of people who are in favor with amendments to try to form it in that way. So for example, Dana, let's say you have a bill that um, uh, you have 10 people who are testifying in favor, five are testifying in favor with amendments, but they're really hostile amendments. And then there are a bunch of people who are testifying against you know, maybe I can take the people who have friendly amendments and lump them in with you and have the people who have the less friendly amendments and lump them in with the opposition. And again, always working with Delegate Jacobs to make sure that I'm not stepping on toes or, uh, you know, uh, you know, interfering with what should be a fair process. Okay, sounds good. Um, also about subcommittee meetings when we get to them. Will we be using a separate Zoom link or the, the main committee link? Uh, there will be a separate Zoom link. And uh, as the chair of a subcommittee, uh, if you want, you know, oftentimes in subcommittee uh, meetings, you have input from advocates on both sides of an issue. Uh, I want to be able to have them be included in the Zoom meeting as well. So you might have like, you know, a, a tenant advocate and a representative representative of the multi-housing people, because that's, you know, when we would have our subcommittee meetings, for example, in a conference room, both those people would be there. And so I want it to be structured in that fashion with the uh, advocates and lobbyists as we typically had it. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, Dave. Go ahead, Dave. You need so to unmute. I got it. So, so for subcommittee, um, I know that we talked about trying to get a lot of the bills out last year that passed very quickly without any any resistance and just you know kind of died over in the Senate for um, just COVID kind of reasons. Are we going to try to front load those this session and try to get them out? Because um, I'm kind of in, envisioning in my subcommittee just like taking those those bills and just jamming them out as quickly as we can. Is that right. something we're gonna to try to schedule that way? Yes, uh, what I told uh, the staff council is to, uh, the priority would be those bills, the ones that passed our committee uh, to be first and the bills that failed in our committee to sort of be last and everything else in the middle. Um, 
and that's for the pre-files. But obviously, after the pre-files have been gone through and more bills are being put in, let's say uh, you have a bill that's not pre-filed, but it's a bill that passed the House floor, the committee in the House floor last year, I'm still going to give that uh, greater preference for you and all the other members of the committee. Questions? Uh, okay, well, uh, this isn't the end of Q&A, but we're going to go to a roll call vote just to, <laughs> okay, so uh, we're going to be voting now on House Bill 1, the prohibition of profit making in Montgomery County, Maryland. Uh, this is a local bill, of course. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, House Bill 1. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through a typical roll call vote. I don't care how you vote on this. It's House Bill 1. Uh, and Trish, you and who do you have backing you up counting the votes in this instance? Um, it, it would be Uriel. So we, we would okay. be taking the vote. Although for purposes for the live stream, this is a mock voting session and um, a practice session. And um, I will just mark the mock vote on a piece of paper. But it will okay. be, still be done on electronic iPads. And um, we'll have two people taking the vote and however you want to run it. OK, well, why don't you just start calling out names on the roll call. And as your name is called up, vote yes or no. Yeah, and we'll see what the um, how well it works. Uh, Vice Chair Stein? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Chairman? No. Frazier Hidalgo? Nay. <laughs> Otto? Nay. Jacobs? No. Weibel? No. <laughs> Park? Yes. Silverty? Negative. Wells? Negative. <laughs> Love? No. Oh. <laughs> House Bill 1's a terrible idea. Uh, <laughs> Delegate Ruth? Yes. Stewart? Yes. Layman? Yes. Harrison? I vote aye. That was an I. Oh, yes. Sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. That's okay. Um, Teresa? Yes. Parrot? Well, after much debate and thought, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Boyce? No. Clark? Just so Sarah and Brooke can hear this, yes. <laughs> Jalice? Jalice? Yes. Anderton? Rolling with my chair. Yep. <laughs> Gilcrest? Can I abstain? Yes, you may. Uh, I'll, I'll vote yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, at least I heard you say abstain if that were the case. Um, and then Healy, I believe she's um, excused. Abs okay. Excuse yeah. absence, yeah. And Chairman Barbet. Chairman votes yes. Right. So, I mean, you know, in that case. Okay. Six, you have no. a vote, uh, count, please. You had 14 <laughs> votes. So um, I forgot what your, um, what you needed. Was it 14 or 13? How many members? 13. 13. So I had 14 yeah. yays. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to do a, uh, what we're going to do now is going to be a little more challenging. It's going to be a non-roll call vote. I'm going to do, say, all those in favor signify by saying aye, all those abstaining, all those opposed. Um, and so here we go. House Bill 2. All those, in all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Is, anybody, is anybody opposed or have to abstain? Nay. Nay. Okay, Delegate Frazier Dalgo and Delegate uh, uh, Ruth, anybody else voting against or abstaining? Well, that worked pretty well. Okay, so the only reason I knew that Frazier Hidalgo and Ruth uh, uh, voted no is because you said it. I would have never known. I see. Everybody. 
I okay, can't, I'm, I'm only seeing the speaker. So you may have to tell me who the two people are. Okay, that's perfectly fine. So basically, right. and of course we have, uh, I'm in gallery view and I assume I'll be able to be in gallery view if I'm the co-host, right? Yeah, uh, you, yes, I believe so. But let me double check. But the host okay. is live, yeah. Well, well, I have to be in gallery view. So, you know, right, of course right. I've got, I, you know, I can uh, cursor over left and right to see everybody. And the bottom line is, you know, uh, I'm not gonna move as quickly as I might have ord ordinarily. And uh, by the way, uh, also, you know, if you want to explain your vote, now would be the time to explain your vote as well. So uh, I'll, again, I'll just be accommodating and make sure I get to everybody. And if I'm moving too quickly, uh, slow me down and, and we'll, uh, we'll make sure everybody's heard and recognized as they're supposed to be. Um, Mr. Chair? Yes. So on a, Go ahead. Uh, on a voice vote, like the, the one we just did, if you want to explain our vote, one would be the appropriate time to do that after the vote or before? Uh, I think that like, for example, in the roll call vote, uh, you know, when you say uh, uh, no, and I'd like to explain my vote, that's when you would do it. Uh, in the case of the non roll call vote, if you are, uh, when I say all those in favor signify by saying I, if anybody says I'd like to explain my I vote, then they can do that. And then when I say who is voting against and who's abstaining, at that point, you know, you could, let's say, uh, Delegate Fraser Dalgo said, I'd like to vote against and explain my vote. That's when we do it. Thank In you. other words, I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep it to being as close to what we did when, when we were alive. Dave, go ahead. Yeah, I'm wondering, would it be helpful, like in this case, where it was just the two of us uh, that voted nay or no or negative, um, would it be helpful? I raised my hand just because I thought if a lot of people said no, then they'd be talking over each other and it would give you a little bit of a cue to go, oh, okay, there's Dave. Um, on cases of roll call, cases like that, is that helpful? Because I know when we do them in committee in a roll call, you know, people are going, yay, nay. Um, is, that, is that helpful for us to do that? Would that be helpful to you? Uh, Trish, in the case of a roll call, I think hands raised would probably work better because there'd be fewer people in the room, right? Um, I don't know. Well, the th again, I can't see the person. So oh. I- We can do both. I mean, I can go nay. Yeah, well, if you if you speak and say yay, you will pop up. But if you just put your hand up, you won't pop up. So- Right, I understand. Do both, yeah. Yeah, well, the reason I suggest doing both is because let's say it wasn't just me and Ruth and, and Delegate Ruth, maybe it was like five of the people. They're all right. going to talk all over each other and you're not going to know who was no anyway. Right. That's why I'm, that's why I'm asking, do you want us to just do both that way? You know what? Well, when I we mean, get if, off if I had it my way, we do every single bill with a roll call, but I know that's not possible. Um, it's just the no. easiest way for me to write down appropriate no's um, and then party line votes. Sometimes there's one that flips. So I can't just assume it's party line, you know, and it's just. We'll just have to work our way through. It's going to be first, a fun time. Yeah. I mean, actually, I think, you know, uh, we'll see how this goes in our first voting session and work, work our way through it. Um, any other questions? Uh, oh, Brooke had to log off. Um, any other questions out there? Uh, I'm trying to look at nobody's raising their hand or anything. Oh, uh, Marvin. Um, th this is a question to other subcommittee chairs. I'm just curious to see if any subcommittee chairs have yet opened up or activated their own separate Zoom account for their subcommittee. And if they have, what was the process? Because I haven't done it yet. I think I'm going to do it today. I just want to know what uh, what problems to expect. Go ahead, Trish. So, and 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 uh, Dana Stein also asked the question earlier. So I just got all the Zoom links yesterday for each subcommittee, and I have your passwords, um, so I can get those all out to you as soon as today, um, and you can get, go ahead and establish the accounts. You could do, you could see if your subcommittee is available for a practice run. Um, so I will send them out to each subcommittee chair and their aides. Um, and then again, if you, if you need help with those subcommittee meetings and you're 
your staff doesn't feel like running it or whatever, um, myself and our new staff person, Uriel, can help you with that. Yeah, and yeah, so, uh, go ahead. So, so the subcommittee Zooms have already been established. Thank you, Trish, I appreciate that. So all we have to do then is just log in and uh, uh, schedule conduct, your meeting. A, conduct a meeting. Right, and, right. And you you have the passwords and all those kinds of things, right? Yep, yep. I just got them all yesterday, so um, I'm ready to hand them out. K K Kumar, could you please give Trish a raise, please? Take two pennies out of petty cash, if you don't mind. Yeah, I'll, I'll let her dip her hand in the slush fund. Um, okay, yeah, uh, no. uh, by, by the way, if any of you subcommittee chairs want to do a practice run through the subcommittee meeting, please invite me. I just like to observe and I see Jerry Clark has his hand raised. Uh, just one quick question that comes to mind. I would assume that uh, we would use the same protocol, whether uh, we're on campus or doing these Zoom meetings from a home or another location as, as far as dress. Like Charles has a suit and tie on. We yeah, I that we should dress in suit and tie. Yes, I think that's appropriate. I, I'm I intend to. Okay, thank you. Uh, there was a question about the subcommittee schedule, um, Kumar. If you just want to let them know that we're just trying to keep it the same, same days of the week. Yeah, uh, we're going to try to hold to the same kind of schedule we had last year, but obviously we're going to be as flexible as you need to be. Any other questions? Yes, Jen. So um, what about jumping on a bill in terms of co-sponsoring after we vote? Will we, will we be able to do that? That's a good question. Patrick, does the speaker's office have a, you know, we have these pylon amendments that, uh, uh, that we do frequently, not all the time. Does, has DLS issued an opinion about this? I, I remember hearing early in this uh, process that maybe that wasn't going to be a, a thing anymore. Patrick, do you know anything about that? I don't have the answer for you uh, right now, but I can connect with uh, you delegate after this and um, figure it out for you. Okay, just let me know. Uh, let me know what the thing is, because obviously, if, you know, I, I personally think it's something that we should pr continue to permit. But uh, Jim, did you have your uh, hand up? I was just practicing with the hand function. Okay. <laughs> uh, any other questions or? Uh, Dave, did you have your hand up or were you just, okay. Um, I don't see any other questions. So I'm just about, oh, hold on. Um, and okay, I don't see any other questions or comments. So I'm about to wind this up with some closing remarks. Um, you know, the bottom line is that we're gonna get through this perfect, uh, perfectly fine. We're gonna have to feel our way. Uh, obviously, if I'm doing something wrong or something that you think I can improve upon, please feel free to contact me uh, because I want to uh, get out, get over the learning curve as quickly as possible. <coughs> Excuse me. So with that, uh, again, Trish, thank you very much for everything you're doing. And, uh, <coughs> and I know that, um, uh, Dana, do you have any comments you want to make? No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay, I got something struck in my throat. Of course, Kathy is going to be my uh, legislative aide, and I believe Margie is going to continue to be that for you. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, if I could just ask, um, I'm not going to end the meeting, but if I could just ask um, my our staff um, to stay on the meeting, um, Uriel, Mary, Rose, um, and the analysts if they want. I just had a couple questions, but all members may depart. Okay, uh, listen, Mr. Chairman. great seeing all of you. Um, see you next uh, week. See, yeah, see you next Mr. week. Mr. Chairman. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, Barry. Move to adjourn. Oh. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. second. Be. Okay, all those in favor signify <laughs> saying I oppose no, the I seem to have it, the eyes have it. See you all. Thank you, Bye. Chairman, thank you. Carry on. Bye everyone. <laughs>
All right, I'm I'm trying I'm trying to get out. How do I get out? <laughs> uh, let me see. I could actually remove you. Watch. <laughs> um, hold on. Who else do I have left here? Delegate Jalisi. Okay. Trish, I wasn't sure if you wanted me on or not. Yeah, that's that's fine. So Margie might also be a backup because I don't know how rampant um, COVID goes around. And um, there are other problems. There are flus, colds, and usually we would come to work with runny noses and coughs, but that is not allowed this year. Um, I know I came in every day for three sessions without missing one day. And um, so this year we have to be a little more careful with our colds. So I need a person to help me back up um, all these hosting, uh, these subcommittees. Um, in, in this meeting right now is Uriel. Uriel, can you wave? Hey, guys. <laughs> hey, Uriel, welcome to the team. Nice to meet he you guys. Is, um, he's gonna be our clerk that's gonna help. Meetings. Um, and, uh, oh, what was I gonna say? Um, I just wanted to make sure like you guys understood everything that they were talking about and um, you guys had any questions. Um, I was thinking about making it, um, I'm gonna talk about wardrobe um, attire um, offline later. Um, we might do a few things a little different this year, um, but we are live on um, hearings and so forth. So we'll have to talk about that. Um, I think that's all I wanted to tell you all. Um, I am going to get the answers to all these questions about members trying to get in the waiting room without having to be in a waiting room. Um, I really don't think that's possible. Um, mm. I will check on that and maybe someone from OIS is listening and they can get back to us. Um, and of course, the biggest problem is the internet, um, not internet, but bandwidth. Um, you know, that is total a uh, total Morgan Streeter function and, that, and the speaker's office. Um, people are worried about their AT&T coverage and on the chamber annex and, you know, and I don't know if you guys have non Verizon phones, those seem mm. to don't work very well. Um, we'll have to check into that. Um, and then we have to look into whoever is hosting the hearings has to be plugged in to, what do they call it? Ethernet cables. Um, so that's the best way to assure um, not being dropped. So, um, oh, I didn't know that. You mean so it, in our offices? If if like yeah, in your in your offices, you're you're probably just using the Wi-Fi. Oh, okay. It's only if we're home. Yeah. No. 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 It's in the office too. To be into the Ethernet. You should have a blue wire in your office somewhere. Um, I don't know, okay. Matt and Patrick, do you guys have the Ethernet cables in your offices? Yep. Yep. Yeah. No so, idea. I'll, well, I'll look for it. <laughs> I know. It I, looks I, like a phone cord. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I vaguely remember something being behind my filing cabinet. So I'll look there. Um, but anyway, um, that's about it. And uh, I have a question. Yeah. 